Today we're going to be reviewing the newest high-speed distance driver from Lone Star Disc, the Harrier. Let's get into it. All right, so the Harrier is going to fit perfectly in a slot that a lot of amateur and lower arm speed players have been asking for for a long time from Lone Star Disc. Coming in at 12, 6, negative 3, 2, this disc is going to be a bit more understable than that curl that all the fans of Lone Star Disc already know and love. This is going to have a, a decent bit more understability. Uh, still have a little bit of come out at the end, um, but it's really going to fill that, that gap that a lot of lower arm speed players, amateur players, players with not enough snap. If the curl is kind of already a stable distance driver for you, the Harrier is going to be the understable distance driver that you're looking for. Now, a lot of pro players, a lot of higher arm speed players, this might not be the disc for them, at least won't be the disc for them in terms of an all out max distance crusher. Um, this disc does have a significant amount of understability. You can kind of, I mean, you can see it just by looking at it, the way that parting line shape, the amount of dome on this thing. This thing's built to be understable and meant to glide for days. Uh, but even higher arm speed players, pro players, uh, you're, they'll be able to find a use for this, either as giant turnover shots, high speed rollers. I'm super excited to check this out. Uh, we're right here at Easton Thompson Park in Huntsville, Texas. I'm gonna play a three or four hole loop. Haven't really decided yet. We're gonna kind of see what holes shape out for this. I've got two of them here, uh, both in alpha plastic, one at 174 grams, one at 173 grams. Really gonna try out, see how these things work as crushers, see how these work as more finessey woods discs. We're really gonna see how understable they are and how far we can bomb these things. I'm super excited, so let's get on the course. There's a lot of people out in the actual park right now, uh, so we're gonna kind of have to manufacture some stuff uh, depending on what's open. So we're here on course hole seven, uh, which you can see is actually more wooded of a shot than I would have preferred to start with with these. Uh, but I have two discs. Uh, this hole's about 320, 330 feet. Um, my goal is if I can kind of pump a hyzer right through that gap on the right side, uh, I should be able to hyzer flip it, turn through that gap. I don't know if they're going to come back out of it, but that's why we have two and we're going to kind of see. So starting with the, uh, the heavier one, 174 grams, really going to try to just pump a hyzer through that gap and we'll see where it goes from there. Woo. Bad release, bad release. Uh, but I saw it was already fighting out of that hyzer, and that was only like 70% power. Uh, so if we can hit our line here. Uh, I think it's going to do exactly what I said. There it is. Oh, it's so understable. All right, I picked the discs back up. We're going to try this hole again. My first impression is it just reminds me of a faster tumbleweed so far. It honestly might be even more understable than a tumbleweed. That thing really wanted to get right super quick, but. Oh, there it is. Ring it up. Woo! That shot, I hope I didn't cover it with the camera. That was a super good shot. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go up the left side this time. That left side uh, where the forehand gap normally is. I'm gonna pump it with a bit more power on a hyzer and see if I can hit the forehand line with a backhand. Kind of. It's through. Oh yeah. Woo! That is all the way down there. That was an amazing shot. All right, I've, I don't think I hyped up those shots enough to you guys on camera because those were both parked. So here's the first shot I threw uh, through the normal gap. Tapping birdie. Still not even 10 feet away, tap and birdie. I want to give them one more chance to kind of execute this super bomber kind of max distance shot. I just want to see if it can be done with my kind of arm speed. Uh, unfortunately, there's a bit of a headwind picking up now, so that makes it even harder. But we're going to give it two more tries to execute this, uh, this big shot and if it goes well, we'll finish the hole. If it doesn't, we'll cut straight to the, uh, the final thoughts. There it is. Go. It's just so understable, <laughs> but it's so far. Nope. Man. I'm so close on it so many times, but 
We'll see where those shots ended up. Might cut straight to the end. All right, I did just want to quickly mention though that that first shot did clear the volleyball court, just kind of way off on the right side because of how understable it is. But I mean, even getting to this range is pretty impressive. So the distance is definitely there. All right, so my final thoughts on the Harrier. So it's exactly what it says it is. It's an incredibly understable 12 speed, super glidey distance driver. Now who that's gonna be useful for is going to depend. This isn't gonna be one of those discs where it has the same use for all players. Uh, kind of like the Benny I just reviewed. Pretty much any player that picks up the Benny is gonna get the same results. It's gonna be a slightly overstable putter. That's what it is. The Harrier is gonna play a different role depending on who's throwing it. Now for me, for my review, as you can see, it's very touchy. Now I can throw amazing shots with this thing. I had a couple shots that were incredibly impressive. And the headwind coming back on the final hole, you could see I struggled to keep this thing from burning into the ground completely. Now the glide is definitely there and the distance are definitely there. I can get this thing 400 feet, but it's a super touchy line to be able to do it. Now where I think this is going to end up in my bag though, I do think I'm gonna put one in my bag because it does things that no other disc in my bag can do. Now where I think I'm gonna use it is I think I'm gonna be using it on giant air shots that I need to be moving right the entire time because I'm not worried about this thing fading out early. This thing's going to be understable, I know that. That's one thing that I can count on. And the other thing is going to be super, super heavy tailwind distance shots because when a tailwind's blowing, this thing's so understable that this thing's just going to go for a mile in a tailwind. Now, for lower arm speed players is where I think this disc is going to get most of its use and I think it's going to be amazing for those players. Um, a lot of female players, a lot of junior players, and now older, older age protected divisions, maybe MA50 plus, something in that range, I think they're going to love this thing because as you saw, where my best shots came from is when I was kind of giving it like 60, 70% power trying to curl through those woods. Now my 60, 70% power might be max power for some of those players I just mentioned. And that's where I think they're gonna love this thing. A lot of times those older are just less, less higher, slower arm speed players. Um, a lot of times what they, they're not able to throw 12 speed discs because they're just, they're too stable, they're too fast for them. I don't think that's gonna be an issue here. I think players with slower arm speeds are gonna be able to get a lot of super easy distance with this thing. Just because of how much glide there is and how much under stability really just makes it accessible for a lot of players with lower arm speed. But regardless, I think it's a great disc. I definitely recommend you check it out. Uh, it's available now, LoneStarDisc.com. A bunch of different vendors have it. And as always, let it fly with Lone Star Disc.